That's what she's talking about. And sometimes it's maybe not quite so beautiful and maybe people need some support. And that's why, pleased to have with us in the studio, Mandy Green, the Kerlink manager. Good morning, Mandy. Good morning. So, Kerlink, tell us a little bit. What is it? <laughs> What's Kerlink? So, Kerlink is a project that works under the Saltbox remit. We are a project that works with people in Stoke-on-Trent who are suffering from loneliness and isolation within the community of the older group. So we are a befriending service. We offer one-to-one support, face-to-face support and a support through the telephone helpline as well. So are there many people in the Stoke-on-Trent Potteries area who face isolation and need need we, a friend? There certainly are. At the moment, we're probably working with about 180 to 200 people within Stoke, and we're constantly having referrals all the time. Wow. That's, you know, that's... Somebody say, oh, well, it's a big city, but but I imagine, I imagine if, if you say there's referrals coming all the time, that you're dealing with what may be the tip of quite a big iceberg. Massively, massively. At the moment, we probably do about 70 calls a day to people so we have volunteers that some volunteers work in the office some volunteers work from home and we call about 70 older people a day just as a keep in touch call as a check-in just to see how they're doing and how their day's been and what they've got planned if anything for the day or even just to have a chat about coronation street or what they watched last night okay because i was going to say this would be very very hard for you to imagine try and imagine i'm an old person Try and imagine. <laughs> There's absolutely no need for that. Anyway, that's the end of the interview. <laughs> so uh, I, I used to ring up and say, hello, how does the conversation then go? Conversation will just be very often the people that we ring, we already, the volunteers already know them, so they've been doing it for quite a while. So that person will be waiting for the call from Maureen or John or whoever. Um, and it's, it very often becomes a two-way conversation, so they'll be telling them about their lives and what they've done. We have quite a few younger people that also come and volunteer. So some of the people then like to know what they've been up to in the week and how college is gone or how uni's gone or what they've done. But, you know, if it was a first-time call, we would just say, hi, how are you doing? You know, talk about the weather, anything. We like to get to know people. So we go out and do an assessment first. So either me or one of the other staff will go out and do what we call a get to know me. So I'd talk about what you did for a job, what you used to do, what you liked doing. Then we read up on that really and find out how we can have an engaged conversation with you about something you're interested in. So so really behind behind all of the sort Mm. of, you know, what you're saying, the obviously... uh, you do the assessment and everything else, but basically you, you, you're making it possible for someone to have a chat with someone exactly. who maybe maybe wouldn't speak to someone that day exactly. or a couple of days. There are so many people that we ring that we are their only contact, so we wow. could be their only contact, and not just that day, but that week, that month, um, which is really sad, you know, and there's, there are lots and lots of people who have got... And some of them have got family... But family have moved away and grown up and, you know, don't have the time, I suppose. Um, but it, but the sad thing is that sometimes we are the only contact that they have, so we are the only person that they talk to. Well, do, does it ever become the case that someone sort of is unburdening, you know, someone's expressing um, the sadnesses? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, do, that does happen. I mean, we always say to people, our volunteers are exactly that, they're volunteers, so they're not trained counsellors. Um, and we, we do a lot of, you know, we some of the volunteers that come in work from the office, so we're always about if, you know, if there was anything that, need, that, that becomes a crisis, let's say, but we have interventions that we can put in place. We, you know, we have lots of other people that we can refer on to if we need to. Yeah. Um, and, we, you know, we are that helping ear, really, if you like. Well, how long have you been involved with Carelink then? I've been at Carelink since December, so I started in December. And in that time, we've had different funding pots. So we've got, you know, we, we obviously do the keep in touch calls that are a vital part of the service. Um, but we've also been very, very fortunate to get some funding from the lottery, so for building communities. Um, and with that, we can then go out and do a bit more in the community and try and get people who are still lonely and isolated, 
but are able to get out and get into the community just very fearful of doing that because they're on their own so what what form does that take so we've started up a lot of chatty cafes you may have heard oh, i've heard of chatty, chatty cafes, cafes yes yes so it's a cafe where we can have a chat um, but we've done we've started those in quite a few different areas so we've got one in hanley so we do one in hanley market that's on a thursday between half 10 and half 12 at the sutton cafe which is at the back of hanley market um, that's really really popular and to be fair that's pretty much been run by volunteers now um, that's quite the, the most established one we've got um, and we have a volunteer that goes there every week and she kind of sorts it out and that is pretty much just what it says on the tin it's a cafe where we will be there so we have a presence there at the cafe and we just have a chat and have a natter and we've some really good friendships have formed from that. I was going to ask, are you getting regulars? We do have regulars that come. We've got three ladies at the moment who were very isolated and didn't really go out much at all. And they've become really good friends, the three of them. They now go for lunch after the oh, cafe. Brilliant. And have booked a holiday and are going on holiday <laughs> together. So Wow. Well, where else? Where else in the city would you have chat We've got Stoke Indoor Market on a Friday. That's between half one and half three. Um, the one at Stoke Hanley, Mar Stoke Hanley Market, Stoke Market is uh, just starting. So we're just getting that one up, up and running. Um, and again, you know, that it's very popular. We also, we try, what we tend to do is take some of our clients that potentially don't go out very much. We'll go and pick them up and take them to the cafe with a view that in, you know, in a couple of weeks, they will just be able to make their own way there. Um, and just generally have a chat with people that are in the market. We'll go up to people if we see them walking around on their own and say, would you like to have a coffee? We'll buy you a coffee and have a chat. Tell them about the service. <laughs> Back in the day, that was called stalking. And anyway, it probably was. <laughs> Listen, um, I've got loads more stuff to ask. You're okay to uh, to sit and, and have a yeah. little chatty cafe. This is Jeff Short on Wednesday's Community Choice on Cross Rhythms with Mandy Green, and she's talking to us about Carelink. She's the Carelink manager. Oh, many more questions to ask. Get a pen and pencil. Or a, no, no, get a pen and paper or a paper and pencil. <laughs> so you can take the details down of how to get in touch. And I'm Jeff Short. Hope I'm winning your attention. And more especially, I hope that Mandy Green, the Kelvick manager, is also winning your attention. So how did you get involved, Mandy? What's, what's your background? What's my background? My, ba my background really is I've worked in homelessness and supported housing for a long, long time an addiction as well so I've worked for drug treatment services uh, but just felt like I needed a change me personally I needed to do something a little bit different um, the opportunity arose for me to be able to apply for this manager's job in December which I did and thankfully God he said it's been a real eye-opener for me really to actually see the effects of loneliness within the city yeah, I, I think it's it's one of those things people talk about a lot. This, uh, what what would you say the effects of loneliness and isolation are? I think loneliness and isolation has many many effects. It can certainly affect people's health. It affects people's mental health as well. Um, you know, people don't seem to have a purpose. It's just get up, do the same things day in day out. Um, although we live in a city that's, you know, we we would say that we are a friendly city. Um, people do tend to be very isolated, especially the older people. I think older people feel that they're not part of the community anymore and their community is very different to how it was before. Are, are there barriers that stop someone asking for assistance or support? Uh, I, think, I think the older generation of people don't like to help, ask for help. Um, that, you know, they're very reluctant to say that they need help. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's very simple things like everything's changed. Things have changed so much. So the very simple thing of getting a GP doctor's appointment, you know, that can be an absolute nightmare for anyone. 
let alone an older person that you know once they once that question is asked is it an emergency they will automatically say no oh gosh when actually you know they actually do need to to, to get a doctor's appointment and that yeah. sometimes we do that for people we will ring up and make a doctor's appointment oh, that's for good. people and you know going to the hospital is that an easy thing to do you know going to the hospital yes. so again that's something that we can help with so we will take people to the hospital and accompany them to their hospital appointment i mean some sometimes i've spoken with with people and uh, they have family but maybe the family are distant or the family's getting on with their lives mm -hmm. and they don't like to say I'm lonely or this. Oh no, my family's wonderful. They're very busy, of course. I don't see them. There's all those sort of things things going on. And, <clears throat> and there's almost a, a, I don't know what you'd say, a barrier that comes up because they, they feel it's betraying the family to say, actually, I'm lonely. Do you experience, do you find that? All the time. All the time. That You know, lots and lots of people that we go and visit, they, they have got family. So some of them haven't. So there are some people that haven't. But quite a lot have, but will say, you know, oh, they've moved away, they're living in Manchester, or, or, or even are living around here. But they always say, oh, they're very, very busy and that, you know, they've got a lot on and they've got fam their own family. Um, and you're right, people don't like to say that they're lonely and isolated um, because it, 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 the, the actual words themselves don't say I'm too good, do they really? No, um, no. And I, and I think, as you say, a generational thing that, that uh, the people... Um, <laughs> Almost, there's a, there's a, I don't know if it's pride or whatever, to, but to say, you know, we, we, we don't share our troubles or mm. we don't, we don't do this. Yeah, it must mm. be, must be frustrating at times to. Yeah, uh, it is, and I think as well, I think people, people have moved now. I, you know, 30, 40 years ago, if you were born and bred in Stoke-on-Trent, you didn't, you know, if you went to live in All Sage, you were living the other outside, out, <laughs> the other side of the world, weren't you? You know, because people well, didn't. Still that. Yeah, yeah. People didn't move out. Whereas now, unfortunately, lots of people have moved out because of work, um, and and they're up, the older generation is still here. So, would you say that the service could expand? Massively. We are always, always looking for more volunteers. So we've, I've got four staff at the moment who, you know, are very, very busy. But like I say, our keeping touch calls and our face-to-face -face befriending wouldn't be able to be, wouldn't, wouldn't happen if it wasn't for volunteers. So we are constantly looking for volunteers all the time. Um, volunteers will get a really good training package that's yeah. not intense. So we don't want anybody to be put off by the by yeah, the training yeah. package because it is very basic. Um, okay, listen, it's Jeff Short with you on Wednesday's Community Choice here on Cross Rhythm City Radio 101.8 FM. Studio guest, Mandy Green, the Care Link Manager. Uh, Care, Care Link, well, that's uh, part of the, the Salt Box Empire. It certainly is. <laughs> so, would I be right in thinking then that there's uh, the, the, there can be a faith element to this, although that wouldn't be a prerequisite? Yes, they certainly can. So we, as you say, we are a faith-based organisation and we always promote that when we go out and do our assessments. Um, that isn't part of the criteria. Um, however, we need to let people know that that is there if they need it. Um, we have a parish nurse that works with us. Um, she comes and volunteers at the moment. So if we have someone who is not able to go out to church anymore, but was something that they did very, very regularly, she can go and, you know, sit yeah. and have a prayer with them, chat to them about the church, about God. Because that must be, uh, you know, for, for some people, that it, it was a big part of their life, then it becomes a smaller part, and then, then they're re distant from it. That must be a, a big gap. Yes, it is. It's a huge gap, and I think... One of the problems that, that sort of arise are the same with anything, that, you know, people are having to do more and more. Um, lots of priests, ministers, vicars have other commitments yeah, as well yeah. that they have to deal with, whereas before they were probably going out and visiting and having a cup of tea with some of the people in the parish. Sure. They have, haven't got the time to do that now. So there's someone who sat listening at home now and they're thinking, you know what, my nan... Mrs. So and so next door, lady I see at the shop, whatever. I think that they could benefit from this. Mm -hmm. How do they go about getting in touch with you? So they can give us a call. So give us a call on 01782 810 320. 
Um, one of the staff there will answer the phone and if we don't answer the phone then please leave a message and we will call back um, and we will take some details we will get in contact we will then contact the person make arrangements to go out to their house at a convenient time for them and just have a chat and a cup of tea and it's there's nothing to be fearful of that you know because some people say oh i don't like people coming in my house you know they go, they'll, they'll get social services in they'll have me put away <laughs> in a home and this sort of thing you know that, that that those what we think are irrational fears but are very yeah, real to some people they certainly are yeah and we can only express our thoughts that that would not happen not unless that's a real need yeah i was going to say if someone was in if danger you can't walk away needs, yeah. then of course we would do that but but uh, you know everyone's outcome really is that people stay in their own home as long as possible so you know we could do referrals they, they might need some grab rails um to make their home more safe so we can we can look at all of that but our intention is not to do that at all it is to to come and have a cup of tea and see how we can make their lives a little bit better and is it sort of confidential yes you know, you, this, yes you know they're not going i mean obviously they may say oh i've got this lovely this lovely lady who rings me up or this discovery chap who rings me up and we have a little chat yes that's uh, all of our volunteers um fully understand the confidentiality policy um and of course you know we don't go talking about things that we've done at work like we all do um, but yes, it's all confident. Confidentiality is a key part of the service as well. But obviously, you know, if we need to discuss things with other people, we we will tell the client that that's what we need yeah, to do. Yeah. And uh, I was going to say, are the people who really they just let me phrase another so I haven't got the question out properly. I meet some people who say um, I'm worried that I will be lying on the floor for days on end and no one mm -hmm. would find me. Yep. I mean, is there, a, is there a sense in which if some people may just be happy for someone to call and make sure they're alive? Yeah, yeah, that is certainly the case, yes. I mean, lots and lots of people have the pull cords, right, you know, that they can use. But again, having someone to ring you up every day and say, hi, Jean, how are you? How are yeah. things? That's, that's nice to know that you got that one call. And I think the thing to remember is that we can very often, because our volunteers ring the same people, as you know, we try yes. to do that as much as we can, our volunteers will then come to us and say, well, she didn't sound quite right today because she's used to talking mm -hmm. to her. And, we, you know, we can sort of investigate that a little bit more and see if things are going wrong in some way. Yeah, so there's some really, you know, really good contacts there. If someone wanted to be a volunteer, how would they go about that? How would they go about that? Again, ring us on the same number. So call us on 01782 810320. Um, we would invite you in to the office or, or or we could come to you if that was the case, if that was better for you. Um, explain all about our service and what the training that, that there is. And it's like I say, it's not intense training at all. It's very done very lightheartedly. However, it is quite serious, you know, of course, the yeah, confidentiality yeah. and data protection and all of that um, and safeguarding. But again, it's done at their pace. So if that needs to take a week, a month however long that needs to take we will do it at the, the volunteers pace really uh, and what is there a, a minimum time commitment you know has someone got to be able to offer so so no, many no blocks not of at all time? not at all we operate monday to friday nine till four thirty um if you can spare an hour two hours half an hour even once a week is is fab um we have some we have some volunteers who come and work every day so we have one lady who comes to the office every single day without fail, um, you know, and sits and does her calls. We have some people who come in and are just in the office half an hour, but do two or three calls. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I really need to tell you about the age difference in our volunteers yeah. as well. So we have, we have about five that are in their 20s, so early, late teens, early 20s. And then we have a gentleman who comes in who celebrated his 90th birthday wow. Wow. last week. Um, <laughs> and he comes in and does his one afternoon a week. And he's just absolutely fantastic. So, the, you know, the, the difference in the age groups of people that volunteer is, is that big. <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely amazing to, to think that someone is still wanting to put back in to... Uh, to other people's lives at 90 exactly and 
and again that the much maligned younger element Mm -hmm. wants to put some bridges out Mm -hmm. Mandy fantastic I could talk to you forever (laughs) so maybe maybe you can ring me once a week yes (laughs) yes why not (laughs) I'm feeling very isolated very lonely can you you know uh, I just give our very best wishes to, to all your staff I think it's a wonderful thing you're doing I'll give that number once again 01782 810320 810320 and that's for people who might want to volunteer or if there's someone who might want to become uh, a client to the scheme or, or yes and, and and again um, I don't suppose you want people ringing up and saying the lady next door could do with this you actually want that person to give some sort of consent or agreement yes, but yeah. yeah thank you so much for coming in we wish you well and uh, yeah be pleased to hear in the future how the scheme is develop- developing that's Mandy Green the care link manager uh, for that scheme as I say administered by Saltbox who do so much across our city uh, our city is, is a wonderful place I'm not sure where Chai Town is James Garden will tell you. Of course he's going.